Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Bartles and I am a Technical Marketing Manager here at Autodesk. I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation where I will be providing a technology review of Autodesk Bridge Design for InfraWorks 360. During this short demonstration, we will focus on several key aspects of the planning and conceptual design processes used on bridge projects. These include the ability to create professional looking bridge models that can be used to convey the proposed design intent. Essentially, the easier it is for a client or recommending body to understand our bridge concept, the more likely it will be that our project or our firm will be selected. We will also look at the impact of being able to quickly evaluate numerous bridge design options. These can include several bridge types as well as configurations. Along the way, as we explore various alternatives, conceptual level quantities are updated automatically as we make changes. Finally, we will explore our preliminary bridge design options in the context of the existing surroundings. This is important because as we make changes to the parametric bridge model, we can immediately see how the change may impact the project area. Now, the way we will focus on these key areas will be through a brief demonstration, followed by a summary. We'll also leave some time at the end for Q&A. Now, my goals for today's session. First, I want to give you some exposure to the bridge design for InfraWorks 360 solution, as well as review a subset of its capabilities. I say subset because it will take much longer than today's presentation to review all of its functionality. Instead, we will focus on the primary features through the lens of its business benefit. In other words, how specifically does bridge design for InfraWorks 360 improve the conceptual bridge design process? Finally, I want to ensure that we address any questions you have about our solution. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. We will begin our demonstration with the following scenario. Our objective is to explore a bridge concept that connects the intersection on the east with a yet-to-be-constructed road on the west side of the interstate. In preparing this concept, we will have to accommodate a rail crossing and an interstate and frontage road crossing. Additionally, our proposed connection point to the future roadway is approximately 1,000 feet north of our connection point at the intersection. Now if we pause for a minute and think about how long would this process take you today? Essentially coming up with a bridge concept, determining if it's feasible, computing some rough estimates of materials to help determine a cost, as well as create a deliverable to explain the design intent of your proposal. As you think about that, let me show you how we can accomplish this objective using bridge design for InfraWorks 360. In case you are wondering, the model of the project area that I will be working with was created from freely available elevation data and aerial photography from the USGS website. We will begin our process by creating a design road using the persona-based interface available in InfraWorks 360. To do this, we will simply click the Create tool, select a representative style, and then pick our start point. I'm going to set my design speed to 20 miles an hour and then click Additional Points to define my roadway. Notice as I click my points, horizontal curb information is automatically being created consistent with my design speed. When finished, I have a completely modeled 3D roadway that follows the existing terrain. Now because we're creating a bridge crossing, I will need to add some elevation to my new road. I will do this using the Profile tool. Once selected, I can immediately see that a PVI and vertical curve have already been created. Essentially, my vertical geometry as well as my horizontal geometry were created consistent with my design speed. Notice as I alter the elevation of my proposed roadway, I can see the effects of my changes in my model in real time. With my initial elevation set, we'll close the profile tool and take a look at the area of our rail crossing. Creating a bridge to cross the tracks is easy. We simply click Add Bridge, and then click where it should start, and then where it should end. When finished, because of our default values, we have a completed precast girder bridge. 
If instead we would like to see our bridge modeled as a steel plate girder bridge, it can be changed with a single click on the asset card. It is important to note that the bridge model we created is both intelligent and parametric. It is intelligent in that the model is constructed using values an experienced bridge engineer would utilize. In other words, as the bridge gets longer, bridge piers will automatically be created as required. It is also parametric in that any adjustments to the bridge geometry will propagate through the rest of the bridge. For example, if changes are made to the pier locations, the thickness of the bridge deck will update accordingly. At the end of the day, this means we can quickly create realistic bridge structures with minimal input. As for our rail crossing, whether we used a precast or steel girder bridge, the length did not warrant any bridge piers, so we will explore that functionality on the next bridge. We do, however, have one parameter we need to verify, and that's the bridge clearance. Essentially, we want to ensure that we have 21 foot of clearance under the bridge. This can be easily determined by turning on the bridge clearance envelope. With a single click, the envelope is displayed. We can then define the required envelope we need by entering a value for the start and end station, as well as the height. In our case, we will set the minimum clearance for height at 21 feet. When finished, we can adjust our display to give us a better vantage point to see if we meet the necessary clearance. It appears as though we do not meet the minimum clearance. But that's easily fixed. We need only click on the bridge and choose Update Profile. When finished, a quick check shows us that our bridge model now complies with the minimum value. In our next step of the conceptual design process, we will move north along our roadway. As we do, we notice that our proposed side slope may be too close to the frontage road. Because our model is parametric, we can adjust some simple grips to resolve the issue. First, we will try increasing the size of the horizontal curve, and if that isn't enough, we can also try moving the PVI. As we move further north, we come to the site of our next bridge. This bridge must cross the frontage road as well as the interstate. Like the last bridge, we will click Add Bridge, and then click where we would like it to start, and then where we would like it to end. In this situation, our initial concept is a precast girder bridge, and because of the length, three bridge piers are suggested. Before we go too much further, let's get a little closer and take a look at the detail in the bridge model that was just created. As we move around, we can clearly see the model piers, beams, bridge piles, and even the bridge bearings. Because this bridge is definitely more complex than the last one, let's pull some quick quantities such that we can monitor the impact of our further refinements. Once displayed, the Quantities Asset Card shows concrete and steel estimates for the bridge, substructure, and superstructure. From this point forward, any changes we make to the bridge are automatically reflected in the quantities. As an example, let's switch to a steel plate girder bridge. We can immediately see that our estimates for steel have increased, and our estimates for concrete have been reduced. We can also see that changing to a steel girder bridge could reduce the number of bridge piers from 3 to 2. Because our model is parametric, evaluating the two alternatives is as simple as a single click. Because we can reduce a bridge pier, in this concept we will continue with a steel plate girder design. My next step in the process is to make any necessary changes to the bridge piers. In our design concept, we will need to both move and rotate the bridge piers that were placed by default. This is an easy process. We simply click the bridge pier and then use the appropriate grip to adjust its location or rotation. Once again, Notice the parametric effect of the changes. As the piers are adjusted, their height and size are both updated such that they remain appropriate for the design concept. Additionally, the quantities continue to update, always keeping you apprised of the impact of your changes. As we rotate our final bridge pier into position, we will next adjust our reference point and perform a quick visual review of our preliminary bridge concept. As we visualize our design, perhaps there starts to be some safety concerns over the bridge pier between the frontage road and interstate. 
How might the bridge design be impacted if we were to completely remove that pier and resolve the safety concern? Using bridge design for InfraWorks 360, we can see the impact of the change in real time with a single click. Additionally, we can easily experiment with even more changes right here in the office, in the conference room in front of the customer, or even responding to questions right there at the public meeting. Well, now we have our answer. Using bridge design for InfraWorks 360, in less than 10 minutes we were able to explore several bridge design concepts for this project. Along the way, we were able to estimate the project's feasibility as well as monitor construction quantity estimates. Additionally, we have a 3D contextual model that we can use to quickly convey our design intent to any of the project stakeholders. To summarize, what is Autodesk Bridge Design for InfraWorks 360? Essentially, it is a software solution that will enable you to model realistic bridge structures in the context of the proposed project area. Now, during our demonstration, we used it to create conceptual precast girder and steel plate girder style bridges. Once created, these bridges could be easily updated in the context of its proposed surroundings. And throughout the entire process, we were able to perform different types of real-time analysis, including calculating bridge clearance and conceptual quantities. As for the business benefit, bridge design for InfraWorks 360 is easy to use, very intuitive, and extremely powerful. Its numerous features will enable you to speed the conceptual bridge design process, as well as more quickly evaluate numerous design alternatives, such that you can present your client the best bridge design concept possible.